uh, Boston Communications Group, BCGI, that was based out of Boston. Um, they were a pioneer in, in prepaid. We, um, basically, uh, we've had Singular, Verizon, Sprint, Alltel, all of them using our prepaid platforms. Um, we basically were one of the, the pioneers in that space in the U.S. And um, Zayas, which is an Indian-based uh, technology company, and we merged three years ago. So one of the things that I like to, to tell a little bit about is, you know, our, our background in prepaid and in carrier environments has really um, come into play in this marketplace today. Um, one of the things that I had intended on the, the, the chart up here to talk about a little, a little bit is that what I'm classifying as the uh, clash of the titans. You have the financial institutions, the city banks, Bank of Americas, Visa, MasterCards, Western Unions, the legacy ins entrenched financial companies. <clears throat> On the other side, you have the MNOs, the mobile carriers. The financial institutions, and I'm going to talk relatively um, around the world in averages because in the U.S. It's, there's a little different dynamics, but basically the banks have been in existence for hundreds of years, and in a lot of markets around the world, they have less than 30 percent penetration of, of uh, customer bases. The, subs the carriers have been around 20 years and have 90 plus percent penetration. So when you talk about who owns a customer and who can drive consumer behavior, right, who's going to drive people to do mobile top-ups and mobile payments and mobile transactions, the question is that about changing consumer behavior and what drives that, who owns a customer, and what's the incentive to get them to change. So one of the things that we, we see is there's a lot of factors that play into that. The, uh, there's a lot of regulatory issues around deposits, closed-loop versus open-loop systems. And there's a lot of elements that play into that. So a couple of things that we, we recognize is user, user adoption is fairly slow. If you look back over the course of time, from barter to currency, from currency to cre credit card, to credit card, check to credit card, to NFC, the adoption cycles have dropped fairly quickly. Um, just from credit card to debit has even shrunk immensely as far as adoption. NFC is still unproven and unknown, but it has all the dynamics that if you know, the carriers and the banks work together, and or you provide the consumer experience, it will drive adoption fairly quickly. There's a lot of convenience factors, and people have talked about that today. And just the fact that everybody has one of these in their pocket is significant. The other thing that's playing into this is if you look on average around the world, of, of the 5 billion cell phones, and if you want to say 4 billion, no matter, it's 5 billion cell phones roughly around the world, about 70% of those are prepaid. In the U.S., the fastest growing market for new phones is prepaid. Now, prepaid used to have a stigma of being uh, lower economic factors that drove why people bought a prepaid. Today in the U.S., it's basically a rate plan. People don't like being locked into long-term contracts. So you go to get a prepaid plan, you, you, you pay monthly, you pay for what you get, you're not tied into a contract. If you want to switch carriers, you can. If you want to switch rate plans, you can. So that's the reason that it's really the fastest growing segment in the U.S. The other thing, the economics play into it a little bit, but I think the economics made people look at it. And today, you can get a cheaper prepaid plan than you can a postpaid plan on almost every carrier. You can get unlimited voice and data typically for 35 bucks. Go try to do that on a postpaid plan. So I think what's playing into this is a lot of factors. The, the other element that plays in is <clears throat> the element of the, uh, the banks and their penetration. I've heard a lot of background. People talk about unbanked in the U.S. being roughly 25 percent. I've heard people, you know, 20 to 30 percent. The underserved elements in the U.S. can go up to 40 percent. So there's a huge market of cash-based transactions with a huge base of prepaid phones. So you have cash and you have a prepaid balance. So how does that equate into the ability to enable transactions, top-ups, consumer behavior? <clears throat> so. That's a little bit of a, a precursor to, to that I wanted to talk a little bit about. And, and I want to basically, the other thing I'd say about us as a company is we are a technology enabler. So as an example, this active poster that I have back here that I'm going to basically um, talk about in a few minutes was driven out of conversations we had with carriers in India and South America. The factor they had is the largest percentage of their subscriber base are cash-based. They don't have banking relationships. The other factor is 80% of their subscribers have prepaid phones. You get into parts of India and South America and Africa, which we all acknowledge is going to be the fastest growing adoption centers for a lot of these technologies. They basically have poor infrastructure. So one of the things that we've done in the development of this is 
This is a self-contained unit. There's a SIM card in this. It actually operates on a cell phone, on the cell phone GPRS edge data. This can reside anywhere in any facility. It can run off of battery powers. It can run off of solar power. So the, the, one of the points in developing this was when you look at these emerging markets, and this came up today, you know, this basically has the ability to enable a transaction in, in any setting. The, uh, the other thing that we've done is in a lot of these settings, there's a lot of elements of consumer behavior in waiting to do a top-up. So in, in India, as an example, in South America and Africa, it's not uncommon for people to wait an hour to top up their phone. When you walk in, you walk in, there's these lines waiting. When you go up to the counter, you're basically giving somebody, you know, so if it, you know, it, for security reasons, right, you have to give them your phone number. The person has a, a cell phone, with they enter in a USSD transaction, your phone number, send it, get a text. It's a very manual, slow process. So part of the motivation behind this poster was to speed up the transaction, to enable you to get more people through that top up faster and to create an automated environment to provide automation where there is none and to provide a, a technology in environments where typically you don't find it. So that was a lot of the, the basis that went into the development of this poster. And so um, what I want to do is just uh, give you a couple of examples of how this can be applied. So um, this is an NFC device. Um, what we've done is in looking at the d different elements of NFC, um, we discussed earlier today there is an NFC enabled phone. There are very few and far between. There is um, an NFC enabled SIM card that are very expensive. Well, I'll let Jeff do it. Thank you, Jeff. Um, the, the other thing that we found is you can actually then do the uh, micro SDs, but you know, I'll tell you, in, in, in the most of the parts of the world that are going to use this, they don't have smartphones. They don't have feature phones, but they do have a SIM enabled phone. So what we've done is we've looked at one way to drive user adoption is through the use of an NFC sticker. This is a unique identifier that is an NFC device that is tied to this phone. So basically the reason we've done this is it's, it's a ubiquitous. It can be done with any phone anywhere in the world to enable a transaction on a device that's freestanding tied to a cellular network or it can be tied into a POS network. So basically what you do is when you basically register your phone, you basically come in and you're able to tap your phone. The system automatically identifies who you are. They know your phone number. It asks you for a transaction. I want to do a $5 top up. And then basically you tap a phone again and you're done. Now, if this was done at a POS, when you give that money to the clerk, they tap that phone, give it back to you, walk out, you get an SMS that you've immediately been topped up. If you did it the way it's done in most of the world today, you're sitting there typing this in, waiting as there's a line. So one of the things that we've identified about user adoption, and by the way, this isn't us, because I'll say one thing about us. We are a technology company. It's just a confirmation that the transaction's been completed. The carriers and the financial institutions are the ones really finding out where they think this should be applied. What we've done is we've enabled a transaction on a, a device that can be applied in many different ways. Well, the cash would take place at the point of sale. Because in, in that environment where 70% of the phones are prepaid and 70% of the subscribers are cash-based consumers, they have to physically hand currency to an individual to do a transaction. So um, as an example, Telfonica in Ecuador is one of our customers. They roughly have 80,000 top-up locations in a country of 16 million people. Now, if you looked at this from a if I was a bank, the banks have nothing near that branch distribution, right? The carrier has more top-up locations to accept a deposit and put into a stored value than a bank does. Those subscribers go in multiple times a month to top up. This isn't, you know, in the U.S., these unlimited plans are very popular. That doesn't happen in most of the world. People go in with a few dollars at a time, a few rupees at a time, a few pesos at a time. So there's multiple transactions. They go in to a street vendor with the vest on the corner using his phone to top up or they walk into a bodega, or if it's more developed, maybe into a grocery store, right, and, or a convenience store. But all those points, there's a, a cash transaction taking place, and that's when this poster basically would be applicable. The poster can be basically um, provided in two different locations. You can have it back by the cash register, so in a sense, you can do a hot transaction faster, because what happens when somebody comes up and says, I want five pesos, they do this, this, take your money, they walk out, they're activated. You can have it at the front of the store, so somebody can come in and tap it, 
go buy their groceries. When they go back to the clerk to pay, they can just give them a PIN number that was just delivered. They type, they type that into a device, and then they walk out and they get topped up. So the device can actually be you know, at the front of the store, at the back of the store. The other thing that we, we've talked about is consumer behavior and changing that, right? That's the key that we all know is the hardest thing to do is changing consumer behavior. One of the things that we do know, and this is from our carriers, partners, that when people have to wait an hour to top up a phone, if you have this device at the front of the store and they say, you know, um, Jose, come up here. Let's show you how you do this. He tops it up and he goes walking out and there's people in the line that said, how do you do that? How did, he get, how did he avoid standing here for an hour and he just walked out? Well, come here, let us show you. The convenience will drive consumer adoption. The safety of not having you know, your daughter provide their cell phone number to somebody behind the counter is another you know, benefit of this. <coughs> Sorry, I had that on so you could hear the uh, <coughs> transactions as they come in. So we know that there's elements, and this isn't, isn't us, this is the carrier saying, we know we can change the adoption of this technology by providing convenience, safety, security. And in India, um, because there's so many of these microtransactions done, the merchants run people off during the busy time of the day. Somebody comes in to top up the phone and they say, leave, come back later. I'm, you know, I want to sell cigarettes and beer and different things. And they, they won't let them top it up. Well, they said, hey, if you want to top it up, you go over there and you sign up and use the poster and you can do a transaction. But if, you, if you're going to sit here and make me do this, go away. So we know that there's elements of that that can motivate some change in consumer behavior. So those are the elements that we, you know, we, we see being applied to help with that. Because that's the biggest issue we have, is getting people to use a new NFC technology. So with the sticker, it can basically be done on any device with the motivation of, you know, in any location because of the fact it's a, it's a cell-based solution that can be self-powered, which it has been. I've left this thing on over there for about two hours. So it can be available with power comes on and off. It can basically en enable any phone you know, to be uh, a, a device, and it can it, it speed up the process of accepting a payment. So that is the rest of the world. In the US, <clears throat> it's a little different environment. right? We have more people that are banked. We have a mature POS network, you know, the different dynamics. So one of the things that we did when we took this out um, at the end of last year when we were kind of trying to get a feel for this, um, the feedback we got was the fact that it's a different use in the US. There's a couple things that we were told. One of them is when you go into Walmart, Kmart, 7-Eleven, you know, Eckerd's, they all have prepaid phone areas, right? And they all have the J-hooks, the traditional method of you buy a J-hook, you pay for it, and then you input the number and the value is transferred from that card, right, to your phone. So what they said is the, the people that actually maintain that inventory in the warehouse said, you know what, our problem is, we have more products that we want to get access in those retail locations than the retailers will give us. They said, you, we are not going to, Walmart says, you can have 100 SKUs, and that's it. So they said, our problem is we have 300 SKUs of people wanting access. And so they said, what we can see with this is this can shrink the retail space required, it can increase the products we can sell, and it can increase the yield we can get. And the reason it increases the yield is you can add additional features to this. This is just an example um, of another value add you can have. I should have said this earlier, so Jeff, help me too if I'm mistaken. But the back of this, you can see, can be consolidated much smaller than it is. We have it the size that it is because, in, you know, in the feedback we've gotten in India is they want to use this for advertising to help pay for the posters. So this could be Coke and Nike. This could be the carrier's products. It could be an advertiser's place. So they, basically what they want to do is use the advertising space. When we first did these posters, there was no display. And the feedback was, well, how do you know what you're doing? So we created a display about like this big. And they said it's not big enough because you can't have multiple menus. So we basically did this display. The next version of this that we're doing has e-paper across the bottom, so you can dynamically download content. And then we're also looking, um, just to kind of get ahead a little bit, is basically having it be that, right? But the thing about this is <clears throat> this device could do multiple things. So this is an example of something that we um, had someone ask us about being able to do. And in this transaction, the way this is set up, this is top-ups. This is bill payment. This is debit gaming cards. This is money transfers. So the point was, this device can enable multiple transactions. So what if I come in and I want to top up my, my boost phone? I can come in and top up my boost phone. What if I want to pay my Comcast bill? You know, what if I want to send money to my grandmother in Ecuador? You know, we can basically enable all these transactions through the same device. 
Now it gets into regulatory issues and, uh, oh yeah, I'm sorry, David.